There's a small tunnel here and it leads up. Oh my god. It leads up to a small hidden stairs that goes up. Hey guys, a great morning to all of you. Today we are going to explore a very interesting hill in Singapore and it's actually around the central part of Singapore. Okay, at this part of the video, if you know which hill it is, let us know in the comments below. Okay, just type out the comments below and later we will see whether you are right or wrong. If you haven't guessed, it's Fort Canning Park. It's quite a sight even along the way towards the hill. Walking up this slope towards Fort Canning Park, you are greeted by a huge sign that says Fort Canning Park. Can you explain why this happens to rocks? Why does it look so porous? Is it because of the raindrops over the years or what? And this is a very nice rock because it looks like a hut. We are currently here. So we actually walked up the slope from Coleman Street and we are now at the Spice Garden. So what we're going to do is we're going to move up towards this area here which is Kapang B. The cool thing about Fort Canning Park is the amount of history and the kind of things that you see used to actually build up this area. So you can see all these old looking displays which kind of like make the walls quite meaningful and interesting. I'm actually surprised to see so many people coming to Fort Canning Park on a regular weekday. You actually see these trees along the side of these steps here. Okay, these very ancient looking steps. It's quite interesting because it feels like it's a different texture of tree. And if you actually look below this bark, you can actually see it's red colour. So outside it's grey and then inside it's very strong red. It really makes me wonder like these things here, what they were used for. It is like looking at something that has been left behind for us after so many years. Over here it says that these are called cupolas and there has been no record of the date of construction or their purpose. But they were probably designed as spaces for rest and relaxation on the hill. I think the best explanation that I have for this is that you know after you construct a building as huge as that, you're left with a bit of cement and whatever you have right, all the like leftover things. And instead of wasting these things, they actually build them into these kind of things cupolas so that probably it's like a signature of their work so it could be one of the reasons why these things exist so if you explore the cupola it's quite interesting because the moment you step into the middle of a cupola you actually hear this echo and it's quite interesting so i would agree that a cupola is probably for a place of resting every other side is hollow so you can come in and then you come to this area here which is like a step and it makes so much sense that you can actually sit here and rest your legs this way so it's a very nice place where you can read your book, you can hear the sounds of nature because it kind of amplifies everything and you know you could have probably children coming in and you're reading them a story and they're all very interested. Maybe this is like a storyteller's booth. One thing for sure, I have no idea why, but the smell of pee in here is quite strong. So I'm gonna get out of here now. Oh my gosh, okay, you cannot really see that it's raining but you can see the crowds actually starting to gather and move into the building there, right? So it's actually raining there but I do not know why we are standing here and we are dry. By the way, I'm not quite afraid of the rain because I can come into the cupola. We have finally reached the Fort Canning Centre and I really have no idea what this Fort Canning Centre is but it's a really an amazing place. I want you to imagine yourself sitting on the steps. Look at what you'll be looking at if you sit on the steps. Let's get in to the Fort Canning Centre and see what they have there. Facing a huge problem now, rain's getting heavier, we need shelter, but apparently most of the doors are locked. You can see there's no shelter there too, and these doors are all locked. Just got to stop down here to get a picture. Okay, we are now in the Fort Canning Centre, and you can see that everybody's actually waiting outside. This is an air conditioned area, it's pretty hot out there, and it's raining. I don't think they can come in because they have too many people. Uh, and the rain is actually getting heavier. There's a toilet here. Amazing place to actually rest and wait till the rain is over. Alright, so now the rain has ended and it was pretty cool inside the shelter because uh, of the aircon. And the aircon is really good. And then I managed to charge my phone a little bit. Now that the weather is great, let me just show you around this area. It's beautiful. First off, the park again. This is a wonderful place for you to hang around and take pictures. It's the Fort Canning Centre. Very beautiful place but still have no idea what this centre is for or what they do in there. We didn't really see anyone in there except a security was sitting in front. Okay, we're going to move ahead because there's this very nice path. It looks like it's a wonderland path that actually curves towards the front. So we're going to go up that slope and see what happens there. Exploring the second level of this centre, see where it leads us to. Small baby steps. 
So if this was built during the British time, it means that those people then were quite slim. So let's just try to see whether this leads anywhere. Spider web don't look like this has been used since a long, long time. Yeah, it's stuck. This center in general looks pretty isolated. This building is also quite interesting. Like, why is there suddenly like one? See this one down here? It's only in the middle of the roof. We are here for a few checkpoints and we have finally reached one of them. Okay, the idea is to actually walk around the park without trying to look for these checkpoints but then passing into these checkpoints. So this is one of them and this is the cannon. Dun, dun, dun. This was the 9 pound cannon that was used during World War II. So this was Fort Canning a long time back and obviously now we don't have all these houses and the river is missing. So we've got the cannons down here and it's the one down here. Well, these chains are really heavy though. Can you imagine yourself carrying like, maybe like a shoebox worth of this chain? I think it's like at least 5kg. This cannon can actually slide back all the way. From the movies, there's supposed to be like this cloth or wick that comes out here, you light it and then it goes in that, there, igniting the gunpowder and then firing out the cannon. These metal things here actually allows them to turn the cannons left and right. So obviously we can't do that now, it's locked on this way. From the cannon, we see something over there. It looks like a tombstone, we're gonna explore that area. Okay, so we don't know whether we are actually allowed to go there now because somebody seems to be praying. Uh, yeah, the person just stood up, so... I'm quite sure it's not a religious thing. Oh, the person is actually going around the tombstone. I think, I'm guessing it's a tombstone by the way. He's going around it and bowing at different angles. Apparently someone is burning like incense around um, that thing there which I'm guessing is a tombstone, but I can't confirm. I'm quite surprised to see this happen because in Singapore, when these kind of things are usually on display, it's usually for display, it's not for prayer. This building here, this building, all right, I'm not gonna face the camera at the tombstone. Um, it's called a Karamat, and it is believed that the Karamat is an auspicious place for people to visit, all right, for specific favors, right? So maybe they're praying for something. And they believe that this particular site that uh, you just saw is the burial place of Sri Sultan Iskandar Shah. Based on the Malay tradition, this person was one of the last five kings who ruled Singapore during the 14th century. Okay, and if you read down, you realize that nobody knows where this person actually died. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next place. These trees look like something that you're finding from the Jurassic ages. It goes up and then it bends up and, and somehow connects here. There's another cannon in front and down below looks like a scene from one of those Indiana Jones movies. You could practically make those kind of adventure movies down here. That's quite cool, right? So now I'm going to try to get over to that side. It may be a little rocky and dangerous, so I may have to keep the camera, but let's try it. For now, it's a bunch of trees. Let's climb over these. Adventure seekers will love these. There are a whole bunch of red ants here, so you really have to be careful if you want to come here. I'm actually at the highest point of this walkway at Fort Canning. It's actually getting very hard to go up and down but I'm making it to the other side. Up ahead, we are reaching one of the lighthouses in Singapore. I believe this one is just for show because uh, it's not near the seaside. Maybe last night it was near the seaside. Okay, so here's the story of this lighthouse. Okay, during the Japanese occupation in 1942-1945, it was neglected by the new ruler. So the Japanese did not actually take care of the lighthouse. So in secret, some people they continue to keep the lighthouse equipment in good working condition, ensuring that the building remains safe and livable. When the British returned to power in 1945, the lighthouse resumed its role after the caretakers unearthed the vital lighthouse apparatus that carefully kept during the Japanese occupation. So over here you learn a bit more about lighthouses that exist in Singapore and they tell you where they are. Looks like we can actually enter into this area. No wait, it is it is not. It's locked. Alright, so here we are at Fort Canning Flag Stuff. So you see those different flags there? They actually communicated different messages to the different vessels. And therefore they get all the latest news on arrival, nationality, company, you know, status of the vessels entering Singapore. Walking along Fort Canning Park, you actually pass what we call Clark Key areas. This is the view of Clark Key from Fort Canning Park. Oh gosh, see the sky. It looks like it's gonna rain. Heavy rain is coming. This part of Fort Canning Park seems a little darker. It also looks like we are entering into like this mystical land, fairy tale land. Okay, I'm not even kidding. It starts to get a little freaky, especially when you're alone here. These don't look very friendly. They look quite scary. 
So we have no idea where we are now, but I'm just gonna keep moving forward. Oh my gosh, what kind of tree is this? It looks okay. This looks kind of scary. This looks like from those movies, right? Where like you have uh, a whole bunch of people who are stuck in trees and then their heads are just stuck here. So it's like, okay, I shall not scare the young viewers, but this looks like, I don't know, a bombarded tree, okay? Or like dinosaur poop tree. So it looks like the dinosaur just pooped here and then like the plant started to use the poop to grow upwards. Wow, so that tree looks pretty cool. I don't know whether it's a fallen tree, but I can see the bark go this way. And then apparently like other trees are starting to grow up from here. So back when I was in primary school, I had this tree inside my primary school, okay? And um, we always thought that this was like an artificial tree because this looks like crayon. And back then I remember that there were other colours. So this one looks a bit rougher compared to the one that I saw. But it really looks like those, you know, dried crayons and then you get all these kind of things coming off. So this tree is called a paper bark, galam. Kayu pute. This tree in front has to be the biggest tree I've seen so far. And it looks like there's this like mountain climbing small little stubs coming out from the sides. This is known as the kapok tree. Can reach up to 40 meters in height. Massive trunk covered with thorns, heavily buttressed. This is such a funny thing. It's in the middle of nowhere. Odds to being 2016, huh? What? So it's an artificial thing. Sculpture represents incredible strength of the human spirit to progress despite life's challenges from a religious perspective. Represents the crucifixion of the human flesh of which God's glory is established. This represents life and greenery which is also good for the eyes. Now I don't know whether you can see it on the camera but it's starting to get really dark and it's still very fascinating to see such things around Singapore. What fascinates me when I see such things? But what is interesting is really to understand now how things used to be. Can you imagine how huge these gates used to be in the past? Right? And we see them in movies, but we don't see them in real life now because things now are just so small. There's a small tunnel here, and it leads up. Oh my gosh. It leads up to a small hidden stairs that goes up. And the stairs are really high. This is like at least 45 cm high to maybe 35 cm high. And it goes up to here. I believe this is where the cannons that you saw earlier on were placed. So the cannons were placed from here to there, facing downwards this way. So looking at this area, it's actually quite cool. It looks like somewhere where they are trying to protect. I'm not too sure whether this is the place where the chariots, the horses, or maybe the World War II vehicles are supposed to pass through. And this looks like somewhere where they hide and fire at the enemies. This is really dangerous and steep. And apparently people are trying to come up now. So it's going to be a bit tough if everybody's going to get stuck on this walkway. way. Okay. Hello! Yeah. This is the Battle Box Escape Shaft. This structure once served as an escape shaft from the headquarters. It's a hollow door. I can't seem to. I think it's open from the inside. Can't open this way. The question of the day is what have you learned from today's trip? What have you learned from today's trip? I've learned that I'm not scared of heights anymore. You're not scared of heights anymore? Anymore? Are you serious? You know, see how I stand just now. You almost fell. I'm not even shaking. One of the things that I've learned in today's walk is that things that are huge, things that are unusual, always catch people's attention. And they also kind of like make you feel like wow. They bring the wow factor. Thank you so much for joining us at Fort Canning Park. Remember to subscribe to us and turn on the notification bell so that you will never ever miss out on another fantastic, wonderful journey with us. With that, we'll see you in the next video. Stay cool, stay awesome, and be your best always. Bye! Three minutes in from our escape and we just need to get to those buildings there. So that's not too far. There's an overhead bridge just about probably about a, a kilometer away. So we're gonna make it there and then cross and there's a lot of shelter there. This is when your 2.4 run is important. Now you have to run non-stop for 2.4 kilometers to reach dry place. And you can hear that I'm not the only one running. You can hear footsteps of others and my pants is dropping.